so bismillah rahman rahim assalamu alaikum so in this video we'll learn how we can uh, calculate the shear strength parameters from the observations of direct shear test or how we can interpret the results of direct shear test so uh, here is an example uh, these are the actual values uh, of an of a test we performed so we'll learn how we determine the c and phi parameters from this test uh, as uh, you all know that we apply normal stresses 50 kpa and then we record shear force and displacement until the failure uh, the failure means if there are two conditions regarding the failure shear force stop increases increases and there comes a point where it starts decreasing so that is the failure condition we record three to four reading after failure the second scenario is uh, the value starts increasing shear force value starts increasing but after some time it becomes constant if it remains constant for some time we terminate the test and we take three to four readings as well uh, correspondingly we note down the displacement values same goes uh, for the other normal stresses as you know then we apply the 100 kpa load on the same soil sample and then we record these values and here is the third uh, normal stress 200 kpa then how we determine the c and phi parameters let's start firstly uh, i will try to make you understand the formation of excel sheet so we'll go step by step firstly i'll convert this newton force into stress in kilonewtons kilonewton per meter square so i'll insert a column insert entire column so here is s shear stress in kilo newtons per meter square or kpa you can see yes okay how we'll calculate this uh, we'll apply a formula force divided by area area of the sample is given as 0 0.003 I will write it down 0 0.003 meter square is the sample cross-sectional area multiply by thousand we multiply by thousand to convert this Newton value into kilonewton so uh, this is how it will become kilonewton per meter square the force value is converted into stress so this is the uh, shear stress value I'll confine it to two decimals so that it may be convenient okay so these are the shear stress now i'll convert the displacement values into the meters so i will insert another column entire column so displacement in meters so as these values are in millimeters so i'll just convert these values into meter we'll divide it by thousand to convert it in meters so I'll drag it down so this is how these values uh, okay 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 this formula is yes so I'll have to increase the format cell and I'll have to increase these numbers for this so that the value can be appear okay so you can see here the displacements in meter the same I will apply here we will convert the force into shear stress so shear stress it is in kilonewton per meter square to convert this I'll have to apply formula divided by 0 0.003 multiply by 1000 to convert it in kilonewton per meter square now i'll drag this one and we'll obtain the k 
kilo newton per meter square stress values now i'll convert the displacement values into the meter so entire column in the uh, displacement in meter so just over click over here we'll divide it by thousand yes I will drag it down okay similarly I'll do the same procedure for 200 kPa will enter two columns so I'll enter two columns one for stress and one for the displacement so here is shear stress stress in kpa uh, display uh, sorry here we'll apply the formula this is shear stress along with the displacement in meters so what i'll do is again same procedure select this divided by 0 0.003 into thousand and we'll drag it down okay now for displacement select this divided by thousand the formula is apply now drag it down okay now Firstly, uh, I'll plot stress strain curves. So, for plotting the stress strain curve, I'll go to graphs and now here select data. Okay, add. So, firstly, I'll plot the graph of 50 kPa. So, along the x axis, there will be displacement in meters okay and along the y-axis there are stress shear stress in kpa kilo newton per meter scale okay so this is first curve now we'll draw a second curve for 100 kp along the x-axis i'll plot displacement in meters and on the y-axis I'll select the shear stress so here is the second curve has been added now we'll add along the x-axis same goes for the 200 kPa it will be displacement values and then along the y-axis there will be stress values for 200 kPa so in this way we'll generate three curves and the graph you can see here so these uh, are the stress strain curve so the maximum uh, value of the shear stress is the governing failure value so what i'll do is i'll write it here now we have to find out the c and phi parameters i'll write it here normal stress and shear stress at failure so as we know there are three normal forces 50 kpa 100 kpa and 200 kpa so now find out the shear stress at failure uh, so what i do is to find the maximum value of shear stress for 50 kpa and that is select this column click ok now you can see here the maximum value is 29.67 kpa then again for 100 kpa will adopt the same procedure maximum value from this column so ok and same procedure for 200 kpa maximum and i will select 
this value enter and we have obtained these uh, failure values now for 50 kpa the failure shear stress value is 29.67 kpa and for 100 56.667 and for 200 is 105 now we have to plot another graph yes insert we'll select uh, this one select data as you know that this graph is between uh, along the x-axis there is uh, normal stress sorry 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 just to make you understand that okay now select data along the x-axis we select the normal stress that is 50 100 and 200 along the y-axis we have shear stress values okay the graph is plotted now now we'll edit the axis axis titles you know here is shear stress in kpa and along the y-axis it's normal stress normal stress in kpa so so uh now what we will do is we'll go to the trend line and we'll join it by linear trend line okay linear trend line so uh, the line has been uh, as we know that these points are joined by the best fit line so in this case it is uh, fortunately these are uh, these points are showing the linear trend uh, the points can not be in a linear trend but we have to generate a linear trend according to the column theory so now uh, we'll select this line and what we will do is okay now we'll select this line and we'll backward we'll click 50 and then display equation on the chart so you can see uh, the y-intercept is basically the cohesion so what is cohesion 5.5 now here I write C values that is 5.5 kp according to uh, law of linear equation so what is angle of internal friction angle of internal friction is basically the slope of this line so the slope of this line is 0 0.49 and 5 I'll represent slope with the 0 0.4995 now I'll have to convert this value into phi Firstly, I'll convert it into radians. So, how I will convert this value into radian? Apply a formula. Inverse, tan inverse. Yes, this value is in radians. We have to convert this value into uh, degrees. So, to convert this value into degrees we have to multiply this value by 180 divided by pi so multiply this value with 180 and then divide it by pi that is 3.14156 and this is the value of angle of internal friction in degrees so this is how we can find out the shear strength parameters from the data of direct shear test so these curves are important to find out the elasticity modulus as we know the slope of stress strain curve is uh, elasticity modulus that is why it is very important these curves are very important so this is how we can perform the calculations i hope uh, you like the video you have understood what i wanted to deliver if you like the video please subscribe and share
थैंक यू एंड अल्लाह हाफिज़